thanks for having us here today. My name is Marcus. I'm here with Matthias. We're from VR. And I want to start with a brief, with a short video of our business overview that shows in which industries we're working in. Basically, we're creating AR applications in all, all sorts of industries. You've seen furniture. This is um, an AR scenario for architecture or VR scenario for real estates. Um, visualizing products of all kinds, pools, electronics. This is an app we did for Bang & Olufsen, became world's best AR app in Silicon Valley last year. Fireplaces and all sorts of products you want to see in the environment. This is using a 3D scanning device to uh, scan cargo loads and compute volume. This is an indoor orientation system that we have created and many more cases. Um, our goal is basically to create a development platform that is used by developers to have an easy step into AR and VR applications, mainly in the field of product visualization. And yeah. No, you didn't. Know. I can actually hand it over so you'll. Pipe from a top pipe to a rear pipe, for example, and let's pick the top pipe and then. Let's see how it gets us. Start good action. That happens if you just grab a device and leave without checking whether it's the most recent version. Okay, so um, I can now film my environment and place a virtual item in my environment to see how it would look like. This is basically this is basically the idea. And um, how is this related to React? Basically, what we did is we created a C++ rendering core and, and tracking um, system that is overlapped by an HTML UI. And I will show you another application that we created, which is a bit more complex, it's in the field of sun protection awnings. And basically what you can do here is you can configure a custom scale awning with um, a 3D view. So here we have an animated view of an awning where I can change sizes and, and the pitch. I can, for example, change the fabric to another material and this UI that you're seeing here is HTML with JavaScript and powered by React. And now I want to show you how this all comes into place in terms of how you can actually access this. Um, what I can do using Safari and iPad and an iPad is I can actually open the developer console. Let me try to do a proper arrangement here. So I can open the developer console and I can access this so-called API object. And the API object has classes like a scene manager that's providing a scene and the scene has children. And if I, if I pick the first children and there this is a special situation, um, it's, ha it's a group, so I have to pick the children of the children. It's going to give me the actual product. It's a 1600 Marky Looks item. So um, if I bind this to a variable, I can then um, access features like, for example, I can set property values that's for used for color options, for dimensions, and so on. So um, let's basically look into the properties an item has. So for example, here we have a fabric. 
we have a pitch and a projection. It's kind of the the width, how much it opens. So um, if I now pass a JSON with fabric, and let's now look up a number. Um, sorry, could you move the console a bit up? It's difficult to see. Over the okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. Better. If you if you hit Command Plus, you can also lock increase the font size. That helps a lot. Okay. Even further. <laughs> Awesome. And the mic is working, can you? <laughs> so, coming back to the demo. Um, let's pick some wonderful stripes. Here I see an idea of a, of a material. 3, 1. Let's use 3, 1. 5, 3, 1. And let's not forget about all those brackets. And if I set this property value, it will apply this new material to my 3D scene. And I can also change it to another material and it will apply it. So basically what we did is we kind of abstracted a 3D representation um, for a JavaScript controlled interface. So the developer only has to worry about how am I going to style my UI, how am I going to create a, a 3D application with very simple APIs. A 3D designer basically uploads his models on, via a website. He can there define materials, options, configurations. What you've seen with the pipes for the fireplaces was, uh, we call it a configuration. So you, you can you, um, build items consisting out of multiple parts. So this was a, a very short introduction for our API and now I'm going to hand over to Matthias who prepared a React demo. React turned out to be a wonderful tool for our applications and we um, decided to make this our main tool quite a while ago and that's, we're very, that's why we're very happy to show some demos of how we get React involved in, into our system. Hi, yeah, that's good. I'm Matthias and I will show you some live coding, some sort of. <laughs> so let's see, um, what I started to build uh, last week was um, some kind of React binding for our API you've just uh, seen. So what I've done is I've built um, you are a provider where you um, just pass uh, our API as a property so it gets exposed. Well, um, yeah. And uh, before you can use our API, you have to initiate our API with an um, app ID you've created uh, on our website. And with, and there you can upload um, models you would like. So I have prepared a um, model tree uh, container. Let's see how it works. Whoa. I need to put it into the sidebar. Um, yeah, so, and the model tree container uses our UR Connect high order component to wrap uh, every um, container you, you would like, and it will then pass the API into the props. So now I can uh, access our UR API. Uh, using props and I will get the model tree out of our app configuration and this will list here all the models I've uploaded uh, on our backend system. <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, then I have uh, yeah so uh, I have uh, attached an on child select which will use our um, action from our um, 
exposed actions. We, uh, oh, one moment. So we have we provide actions for uh, reducers, and we also provide some pre-factored um, uh, reducers. I will show you in a moment. So if I click on one of uh, those models, it will trigger the insert model action and uh, it's actually on a thunk and it will automatically um, set a um, loading state for us so we can access uh, the loading state everywhere in our app if anything asynchronous in our UR API is going to happen. So in this case I can show a loading a spinner. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> this happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm online. Okay, one more try. Suck. Come on. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, the next thing... Uh, By the way, just to clarify this, um, on the left side you see our WebGL version. We've actually ported our C++ rendering engine onto a WebGL version. And this is kind of the environment we're developing in before we try it on actual devices. Mm -hmm. So, what I've additionally added is a um, scene a component. Uh, of our API and what it does, it syncs our internal state uh, to a, a Redux reducer state. So every everything that happens in our scene, if we insert a new model or if we move a model, it uh, gets synchronized with uh, Redux. So what we then can uh, do is if I start to drag um, for example the the model in the scene, and I open uh, Redux, then here's our predefined uh, reducer state. And what we now can hopefully do is we can time travel through the scene, which is quite nice. <laughs> yeah, so what's next? Um, yeah, we've got I have here an info box container and I can in the info box container I can here insert our um, reducers to have access to the complete state and then I can show some information about about the theme scene you will see in a moment. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, React Hot module reloading should work, but if I add some big parts of the application, it has to reload. No. Sorry. <laughs> I need to restart Chrome. <laughs> It should work in production mode. Famous last word. Did you just deploy it Friday? <laughs> so. But do you know why you have to restart Chrome? It's a bug here on my uh, laptop. I don't know why. It's a new model, but I get out of memory. I don't know why. But now it works. So uh, I have added the scene component here. So now I have listeners that will listen to touch rays in the scene. So if I click on a model, I can access some um, information in the Redux. So everything is synchronized. So if I now start to drag, you see here some information like the position. <laughs> Yeah, I can um, change the different colors. 
things. So yeah, and everything is in the Redux. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, yeah, you mentioned you wrote uh, the rendering logic in C++. Are you using mscript? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, I forgot one feature. <laughs> um, My pleasure to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I have here an AR toggle. And if we now build our app for one moment. basically how this works is um, it will upload um, a compiled code uh, how we call it the bundle to a server and the server will then be accessed um, by the applications on the devices kind of downloaded once and then cached and so uh, uh, we can yeah, connect well, I'm now. actually not going to set up the screen share okay. again. I'm just going to put it like this. Um, so basically, if we now start the application he created on our tablet, we'll have the wrong app. <laughs> 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 yeah, we would have AR mode. He he added an an AR button just to give you like. Um, yeah, but only visible on tablets. Yeah, since AR doesn't work in the browser, on Android it does, but. On iOS, it doesn't. So, yeah. yeah. So, what, so you basically you create the app in you you're creating an app in a browser, and then it's mm -hmm. it's deployed, it's accessible, like in this kind of um, bundle only on iPad. Yeah, actually, no, I would also um, wanna point out that having applications on a website, like a three D product configurator and so on, on a website definitely makes sense. Since we brought it into relation to AR and VR application, we wanted to show the AR mode as, mm -hmm. as, as part of the demo, but it's not a must. It can also be a pure uh, web application to configure from as well. Cool. Um. So the things we take care yeah. of is, is hosting the data and setting up materials and the assembling logics and so on. And stuff you can do, for example, is API cameras. Then we have the perspective camera. And then I can enable the head mode mode. <laughs> and then we could use our app on some Google Cardboards. So, uh, and I'm starting to like expose our API into a React context. So it would will be easier to yeah to alter the state and to react to the state. So yeah. When when you talk about the API, are you talking about like a client side JavaScript mm -hmm. only app? Yeah it's uh, our API is like an JavaScript wrapper API that has access to our C++ core. It's basically a bridge. Okay. It's a bridge between between the C++ core and the JavaScript API, but the JavaScript API is object oriented. So you can say model get from repository by ID and then you say model insert, model delete and so on. That's why we call it API. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how does this sorry? Well, how does the C++ core is it on client side? Mm -hmm. so yeah, it renders, it renders on client side. The WebGL version might be a bit confusing since we kind of ported the C++ code to um, JavaScript with a WebGL version. But um, if you look at the, at the applications running natively, they render with C++ with a transparent HTML browser on top. Mm -hmm. So the whole UI is basically web-based, but the underlying rendering is all uh, native. Exactly, yeah. Why did you go for like implementing the the render engine yourself? Like, I don't know. Wait, uh, if there was an option, like 
other For licenses and stuff. The thing is, we actually started with our project before Unity mm. became famous. Yeah. Okay. That was, to be honest, that was one reason. But yeah. on the other hand, um, looking back, we don't regret it mm. since we save a lot of license costs and have a yeah. bit of a um, bit higher margin um, on, on on deals. And yeah, we're pretty flexible on this. And yeah, we can kind of tune it. Mm -hmm. So does it? Do I understand correctly that the um, Navia API maps basically to the WebGL version as well as the um, C++ version? Exactly, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Must have been a ton of work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, all right, we have an estimation that there is about 40 man years in our system. Wow. <laughs> We're 14. <laughs> <laughs> five years. <laughs> Actually, we're cash flow financed, so we've been selling a lot of apps, and currently we're doing um, a venture capital round, um, looking for money to grow. But yeah, those things are selling pretty well, and also, if you if you're working at a company, you can kind of try to convince them to also dig into product visualizations using our SDK make some money with it. We would like to share this cake. It's too big for us. <laughs> so, yeah, let us know if you want to work in the field of AR. Is it open source? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it going to be the same thing? Not yet. No, if, if Google buys us, maybe. <laughs> And how do you get the models in? Is there like from the like on market uh, render engines imported with material and stuff? Because they, are, they have a lot of materials and yeah. Layout Actually, stuff, so. do you want to open the material editor you have created? Um, so basically, how this works is we you upload a model either in FBX or in OBJ format, which is pretty common. So um, 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema, mm -hmm. and so on. They will um, let you upload uh, 3D data via website. And then you can start another tool called our material editor, where you can select surfaces and assign materials, configure shaders, and save that to a central server database, letting the app access that data and that, those models. And the mapping, like for the textures and stuff. Yeah, this is it's done in your app. Yeah, yeah here's a um, material editor, so you can uh, click on surfaces, surfaces, and then you can assign your materials you've created, you can edit materials. But I mean, yeah. somebody has to make the model, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you define what is a, like there's a lot of polygons, so how you probably have to combine them to, um, to be, like here you can apply this material, here you can apply that, there are different parts in one model. Right? Yeah, so basically, um, I mean, it all it all relies on low poly modeling that is famous from gaming and so on. So basically, a three D designer provides a, a three D model with um, with original materials assigned. Okay. Kind of, he assigns original materials, and we take this as kind of a selection, and then add options to that selection. To be honest, we throw away the materials he defined. Because it's mainly it's mainly a single texture and so on. It doesn't have reflections. It doesn't have parameters and so on. So we just use this as a selection in order to define options. Um, yeah. But the modeling obviously is a is a process that has to be done. Have you looked into? I mean, it's a deep question. Um, GeoCF. Yeah, we have looked into that. Um, it's kind of on our roadmap, but yeah. for now, let's say not a must since it's, say, an optimization. And um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting thing. But it, um, so it's not a must for you because you don't ship over the web mainly. The, the main purpose is to have the app where you ship all the models with it, right? Yeah, I mean, basically we already have a binary format which does quite a bit of compression. So basically if you have a, like a 100 megabyte FBX file, it would probably like be like 8 or 10% with the binary format. Yeah. So that's already doing quite a good job. Um, so, if that would be increased another 20 or 30 percent, it would obviously be great, but not one of our top priorities 
with the current with uh, yeah with our current tasks. Yeah. Cool. Have you already played around with WebAssembly or or thought about it? Actually, um, do you want to answer that? Yeah. So, uh, M EM scripting is essentially uh, WebAssembly, but not the the newest version. So. I was curious if you actually tried out. I think Clang supports it now. And yeah, it not yet, not yet. We're looking into this as well. We're looking into this as well. It kind of replaces EM scripting and it should be more stable and faster. Um, but we, see, yeah. we need time and we need people <laughs> 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 and money. <laughs> All the good things in life. <laughs> Yeah. Any more questions? Um, yeah, I have a million, but we can do this at beers. <laughs> okay. Later on. Good. Awesome.